Uh, is our faith, though, in real estate broken? That is a debate over at radio's uh, Bloomberg Surveillance. Jonathan Miller of Miller Samuel is live with Tom Keene and Ken Pruitt. Good to everybody. Let's listen in. Uh, on uh, Bloomberg Television, we welcome you. We're here with Jonathan Miller, Miller Samuel, in the real estate business, not only in New York, Jonathan, but nationwide. Is our faith broken on real estate? Has it been shattered? Is that too dramatic? Uh, how are we going to be five, ten years from now and our belief on real estate? state and its value. Well, I, I think that the whole concept of the American dream is sort of taking a hit now that there's nothing wrong with the American dream of home ownership. It's just that it was abused and uh, it was the delivery vehicle to, to get people in houses that was the flaw. And the problem that yeah, it's going to take us three or four years to sort of work our way out of this. And then you know, 10 years from now, this will all be behind us and we'll do something else stupid. But, I mean, you know, I see it as housing is cyclical, just like anything yeah. else. But, th but this is temporary, right? Oh, absolutely. For, I, I mean, at least I in think the post-war period, look, I remember, went up. I remember in the early, I remember in the early 90s that you had uh, people saying that th that was it for real estate in New York and luxury housing was over. And clearly that's not true. So we have to get beyond this. There was a big book, I think one of Pulitzer, called Gotham. A couple of yes. professors wrote a, a history of New York City uh, from the beginning, from the Dutch up through the time the city consolidated. And it was a real education to read that because you, I, I, at the time, the headline in the New York Times, Crisis in Affordable Housing. Pick up the book, 1838, Crisis in Affordable Housing. Absolutely. That's something that's never really changed in New York, is it? Well, well I, I think it, we could sort of document every decade the same conversation where people are complaining that rental prices, sale prices were too high, yet they it continues. Give us an update on mortgages. You were talking, uh, you know, there is a buoyancy there. Uh, many of our listeners and our, our viewers uh, are big on jumbo mortgages. Can I get a jumbo mortgage? Well, in Manhattan, any mortgage is a jumbo mortgage. Pretty tell us, right wait, for our viewers, Ken, tell us about this place, this this Hell's Kitchen place. Wait, this was in the, in, in the post the other day. This is a guy, it, Hell's Kitchen, you which is not exactly up. the high rent district. Right. I mean, it's not in New York. He's paying $700 a month for an apartment that is 55 square feet. And as the Post pointed out, a cell at Rikers Island is 54 square feet. It's a, right. 55 square That's feet. That's amazing. So? Actually, the smallest apartment we've ever appraised is about 130 square feet. So that was a okay. McMansion. So if I was going to get a jumbo mortgage on that 55 square foot <laughs> place, can I get it? Uh, probably not. I mean, look, uh, jump, jumbo mortgage means 729000 and above. And the problem is right now now that there's this sort of separation between jumbo financing and conf conforming mortgages because Fannie and Freddie are behind the conforming mortgage products. Manhattan is a high-cost housing market, and jumbo financing, the terms are much more onerous. So what you're seeing is a lot thinner activity levels at the upper end of the market.